Chrissy Teigen's a big fan of yours. Supposedly. She's on your website. No, just kidding. Yeah. Um, she, I mean, that was a story. We had a team retreat once and that was like, this was before I think Chrissy Teigen really blew up, but we were, oh. we felt like she would be, if we would have any influencer, mm -hmm. which we didn't do much influencer marketing, she would be our girl. So we just started like researching who is her manager. I actually, I think had a meeting with one of her, not her direct manager, but like a publicist or something. And for her to do any posts at that time, it was like $250,000. Wow. Oh. I was like, that's okay. steep. I'm like, okay, so that's out of the question. Yeah. So then we just started sending product to her manager, to any address we could get our hands on. And six months later, like we get this amazing tweet that's like very hard to top, you know, in terms of endorsement yeah. for our brand and like how much she loves it. And she tells everyone who comes over to drink it. So what kind of a bump did you see after that? It was pretty significant, both on Amazon and our website. Would Revenue, you say it was worth 250000 No, it wasn't worth 250k. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it was definitely like a great, <laughs> a great endorsement. Sure, sure. Yeah. I saw a statistic yesterday that made me think of this. 80% um, of companies are overspending in ad advertising. And so it's like... If you think about it that way, you know, that 250000 you have to be really sure that what you're going to get in return from that is 250000 And I think yeah. the way that you did it and the way that she ended up tweeting about it was, in fact, better. Because if this was like a sponsored post, people no, can see through that. Exactly. Like this this like, seemed genuine. This was so genuine. It's yeah. the best type of endorsement you could have got, you could have got received, right? And it was a very pivotal moment for the brand and the company. Like the fact we, the first, like the fact we were able to reach her, but second, the, just like the aftermath, because it wasn't just that spike that week. Then we were published as like her favorite teen people magazine and all these other outlets. And that just like. Now you're brand building. Yeah. 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 Just like really, yeah. Having a great foundation for brand building, the credibility that you like always wanted to receive. Um, so did you reach out to her after that? In, yeah. And attempt to like further the Yeah. So her team was like. She never does this. Like she had to go through a lot of hoops to actually like tweet that, um, because Wait, what? Yeah, she, she doesn't have. Her tweets no. seem very random. Well, I mean, other thoughts are, but if she endorses a product because okay. nowadays, it's product like, related. she was always paid for it. Right. So she had to basically tell her people, like, no, I just, I'm a fan of this brand, and like, I want to give them some, some, some love, some love. Right. So I'm doing this. So then we were talking to her team about either an investment or like a future collaboration on a line. And so those conversations, like I wouldn't say they've stopped, you know, so we're like figuring it out what to do next. But I was telling, you know, some of our investors, it's almost like we got the Holy grail of like her being just a, a friend of the brand and yeah. being so natural in her endorsement. I'm like, I think anything else would kind of erode that. Sure. That. It's almost Unless, like you like, don't need the investment from her at yeah, this point. It's, it's only like if we were, to truly do a collaboration on the line or something. I mean, what I love about the story to some extent is also it just shows if you make the product that good, right, then your ad spend doesn't really matter much because your product can be, it can speak for itself. And so like boy smells with the candles, like Casey Musgraves goes into their DMs. That is not a paid partnership. And they made a candle together called Space Cowboy. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's pretty cool. But it's because he put so much emphasis on on the product. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you know, and, and I, I think we would be in the camp of like, at least right now, some of these avenues are limited. So you are spending a lot on marketing. Yeah. But if you really go back to the basics, but part of that is, you know, you have to reach that person first to get them to try your product. And that's the hard part. It's like people have so many gatekeepers these days. So yeah. even to get to Chrissy, Handlers. it was just like, <laughs> You couldn't so get in through the much. front door, so you try the back door, no. the side door. Yeah, like literally every skylights. door. Um, and same thing when we got into Oprah Magazine. It's not just like, you know, you get in. Like, so I've sent a package every three months. Like we're sending, you know, we're sending product. We're sending it to like not just New York, but like these other avenues. You know, and then like through another connection, that's when we finally got in. But there is like an engine behind all this. 